Good afternoon. As you can see, we're out and about again in the car and we're going to visit a rather exciting organ or actually we're going to visit two organs in one church but more on that in a minute. Um, there's a couple of things I'd like to say first. We're going to sort of use, the, use the time while we're driving along here. Well, it's very sunny today. It's fine. The spring has finally sprung. Um, we're going to use the time in the car to, um, to uh, actually to say thank you. Um, my my organ YouTube channel has been up for it's been up for a few years actually, but I didn't really do anything with it until the end of last year, 2018. And um, my my good lady and myself we decided come on, let's give it a go again. See if see if you know see if it really picks up again. And since October things really have been picking up. And uh, shock horror, I couldn't believe it. I've now got pretty much 5,000 subscribers on my channel. I mean, we're talking organ music here, yeah, and 99% church organ music here. I never thought that would have been possible. So a big, 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 big thank you, and I hope that that continues for a very long time because it's actually, it really is a lot of fun doing what we do. I get to visit some rather interesting instruments, and uh, of course I get to meet some rather cool people when I'm doing it, and it gets me out and about, you know, gets me out of the house. Um, my missus and I, we both have sort of other jobs on the side and, um, well not on the side, we have real jobs and this is on the side, but by the looks of it, this could actually take the upper hand at some point, uh, which would be absolutely brilliant. That would be great. I've been a self-employed musician for years and well, if this is going to be my self-employment, then yes, please. Um, so what we've done, and I hope you don't mind, we've sort of said, well, if this is going to be a kind of a full-time thing, then we're going to need to sort of build our business a little bit, yeah? Which means we're going to need some more equipment. At the moment, we're doing this with my iPhone. Okay, I bought one of these microphones recently, and I'm using microphones I bought years ago to record the organs. They're certainly not the best you can get, but, you know, they do the job. It makes it sound, but, you know, eventually we're going to get to some really interesting organs where we're going to need more to make it sound good. And all of that stuff is quite expensive. By the way, for the international viewers, I've just joined the German Autobahn, and this is a de-restricted section, so I could have some fun here. But I'm not going to. I'm going to behave myself. Anyway, back to business. Um, so what I've done, I've set up two things, two links on my page. One of them is a normal PayPal link where if you feel like it, if you're enjoying what you're hearing and you think I'd like to support Fraser in a different way, not just by commenting on his videos or subscribing and liking, I'd like to, I'd like to I'd like to support him financially and we've enabled that with this PayPal me link where you can send over something and there will of course be a thank you for that. You will receive something from me. Um, there is however another another variety as it were. There's um, sort of it's a monthly thing. It's like a monthly subscription if you like to be a member of my channel. Now this is not YouTube membership. This is something else. It's called Steady. And at the moment, I've set it up in German only, but I'll see if I can get it set up uh, at least in English so that you understand what's going on. And the idea is you can sort of send you know, a small amount of money every month for as long as you want. And for that, you get a membership to me, basically. And um, you get some advantages there. I send you emails in advance of everybody else. Or maybe you get special videos just for you. You can tell me what you actually want to happen in the videos and rather than me just add it to the list of things that maybe happen, uh, I will actually get around to doing it and so on and so on. So you get the idea. Um, now, nobody really likes asking for money and things like that, but it's like I say, this is this is turning out to be something we never expected and um, we've got to be careful that it doesn't sort of go overboard at the moment. So anything you're willing to support us with is more than greatly appreciated and uh, I'm just going to say thank you and leave it there. I've got to concentrate on my driving because we're heading off to a rather exciting place with some rather exciting instruments. See you in a minute. Bonsoir mes amis, or should I say good evening friends. Um, we're in a German church and this is a French sounding organ. <laughs> look closely. I'm not sure if you remember this from another church we visited. Do you recognize this? Recognize these little decorations on the keys? Don't they look rather similar to an organ we visited recently um, when we were in Virgis? Don't you remember that? Uh, an organ by the builder named Gucker. 
from down near Heidelberg. And he builds sort of French style organs here in Germany. And this is organ number one in this church. Where are we? Well, I um, posted a comment yesterday and asked everybody, where do you think we're going? We're going to visit a church where, well, the first organ wasn't big enough, so a second one was installed. Some people thought we were going to Cologne Cathedral. That would have been quite nice, but no. We're still in the Westerwald region of Germany, and a couple of weeks ago we visited Virgus with the organ from the same builder here. A couple of weeks later we went to the Abtei Marienstadt, the, the great big Riga organ with four manuals, and today we are in a tiny, tiny little village right up in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, stuck right up at the top of the Westerwald, if you like, a village is called Gackenbach, and Gackenbach is world famous, I'm not joking, is world famous for its organ zzz. There are two of them. This is number one. This has been in the church since about 1999, 2000, and like I say, it's French in style. Two manuals, few, a, a few stops, as you can see. It's got a lovely sort of fresh, crispy French sound, but there's something waiting for us downstairs. So maybe I should say a word or two about this French style instrument before we go and look at the other organ. Um, at the first glance it may appear quite small but it actually has everything a proper French sounding organ needs. It's got the, it's got the flute harmonique. Mm -hmm. It's got the sort of the nice stringy sound. It's got the big fat principal sound, the montre, that you get in, a, in most French organs. Yeah. And if you sort of get everything together, if you get everything together, which we're going to do here now, wait a minute, let me get this and this. And here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. That's everything coupled together. And we've actually got everything, like I said, everything you need from a French sounding organ for your French repertoire. <laughs> that we've got a wonderful acoustic too. Right, I think it's time we go downstairs and have a look at the other organ. Come and have a quick look at this before we go downstairs. Um, we've been crawling around in quite a lot of organs over the years and I have never, in the time I've been doing this, never seen an organ as clean as this. Look how perfectly clean and shiny and dust-free everything is here. It's absolutely unbelievable. And this is all thanks to the work of one man, and this is the one man who's responsible for not just this organ, but the organ downstairs as well, which we're about to go and see, uh, the organist here in the church. His name is Ralph Sislik, and he's been here for quite a number of years as organist, and he's made it his sort of life's passion to install and maintain these organs in this church. Wonderful guy. So there you have the French organ, that's what it looks like from down in the church. And then when you turn around and sort of look around the church as it is, you can't see the second organ. Or can you? I can't see a second organ. But if you walk in this direction with me and sort of look into the, into the transept at the side there, what are you going to see? There it is. Hidden in the corner, there it is, the second organ. Or welcome to the master console of this magnificent instrument. And when I say master console, what I mean is that this four manual console here controls both organs. That's this one here. Have a quick look at this lovely pipework here. It's just as clean and shiny as the organ upstairs. Um, I think this is probably the, the cleanest and most beautifully uh, presented organ I've ever seen in my life. And I mean that quite seriously. Um, it's quite something. And uh, at this magnificent console, four manuals, and an incredible number of stops left and right from the organist. Uh, when you first look at it, you think, oh, I'm never going to work my way around this. But it's actually quite easy. On the left, we've got all the stops for this organ. And on the right, we've got all the stops for the organ upstairs that we just looked at, the French organ. Yeah? So what I can do, I can, for example, what I played 
just before we came down, I had something from the French organ. I can do exactly the same here. If I get all these stops here, and here, and here, and here. And I can, wait a minute, I've got to, I've got to think about this, but this should work. <laughs> So there's the French organ controlled from this console. Now, let me clear that and let's move over to this side. What is this organ? Well, it's an English organ. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we went to visit an English organ in Bonn. And the story with that English organ was it was taken from a church, taken over to Germany, cleaned and tidied up and sort of restored a bit, put in the new church, one or two new stops added, and that was it. This organ here is a very, very different story. This comes from the organ builder Nelson and Company. This organ was installed in a church in Durham in 1904. It was a very small organ. It only had 13 stops. Now, if you look at this here, that's rather a lot more than 13 stops. Over the years, Ralph has added to the organ, and it now has 43 stops. And actually, there's some more additions to it, but we'll get to that in a moment. And there's something planned on top of that as well, but more on that later. Like I said, I've never really seen this organ before. I've only ever heard about it. And I have talked a few times uh, with Ralph about it and visiting it, but I've never been here. And uh, we came into the church and we had a look upstairs at the French organ first, then we came down and had a look at the console, just talked about it, didn't really sort of go into too much detail. But when I finally sat down at the console and started to play something, something struck me. And it's not just that it looks like an English organ, and it's not just that it sounds like an English organ, it smells like an English organ. And that's something I really can't explain. I don't know if it's the wood they use here in the, in the console itself, it's, if it's the wood they use in the keys, if it's the wood from the pipes, but there's a very sort of, there's a very um, distinctive woody smell that you only get in English organs. I've never found it anywhere else. I sort of get a little bit homesick when I smell it. It reminds me of the old organs I used to play at home. Mm, interesting. I wonder where that comes from. Maybe someone can explain it, or maybe it's just my brain. Who knows? Anyway, what do we have in this wonderful English organ? Well, we have the typical sort of string sounds. They're enclosed in the smell box. We have one of these cheeky little flutes. dainty little flute. I can open the swell box then. We've got the usual sort of slightly smaller open diaphasin you would find in a swell organ. I'm going to add the full foot too, so we've got a sort of a choir accompaniment sound. course we can close the swell box on that which gives it that lovely ah, dynamic effect okay in the in the main manual now we've got like in Bonn there were separate open diapasons principles and here we don't have two we have three or is it three three um, number three is quite a sort of small small sounding diapason it's rather nice hold on That sort of fills the church rather beautifully. Number two is a lot stronger, but it's still not overwhelming. But when we get to number one, boof. going to build a sort of principal chorus, I think we'd probably use number two, add the four foot and the two foot to that, and there we have our sort of typical, typical sound. <laughs> That's the basics of our English organ so far. We're moving up though, 
something's missing up to now, and that's the, that's the flutey sound we got. The French organ has it, it's got its flute harmonique, and the English equivalent to that would be a clarabelle flute, or a clarabella sometimes, and this organ is called a clarabelle flute, and it's here in the solo organ, the stops are right up at the top here, and that's the third manual here, and that's this rather beautiful sound, we will uh, change some accompaniment for the pedals here, and we can accompany it here. So No organ would be complete without a battery of reed stops, and I think we're going to start with that one. That was the cornopean, cornopean, cornopean. There are various different ways of pronouncing it. Everybody argues about it. I dare say there will be a million and one comments about it, how to pronounce it properly. Well, get on with it. Um, that's the cornopean. It's in the swell of this organ, and it's actually the only reed in the swell that's swellable. <laughs> There are other reeds that are mentioned under the swell organ there, but they're outside the swell box, so they're not really swellable. If we move up into the, up into the solo division, we have an orchestral clarinet. That's I've got a beautiful, big, fat, fruity sound. I love that. Very creamy, actually. I do like that. That's a rather lovely sound. I can also accompany the clarinet, of course, uh, if I have the swell strings again. Um, it should work like this. There's also an orchestral oboe, which sounds rather more nasal than the sort of French-style oboe you would hear. If I add the tremulant, you can hear the whole organ shaking away. tremulant before the whole organ falls apart. There's a trumpet up here as well. What does that sound like? <laughs> Solo trumpet. Not bad. I've just discovered something rather interesting. There are a hundred trumpets in this organ. Listen to this. In the grand, uh, great organ, grand organ, I'm talking French already. In the great organ, in the swell, in the solo, and upstairs in the French organ. That's something you don't find every day. I think if I was organist here every Sunday, I would play pretty much like this. What I've done, I've taken the the great principal chorus, and I've coupled the swell with it, I've stolen the mixture up from the solo organ, and because it's in, the, it's in a different swell box as well. And all of that coupled together gives this rather lovely effect. <laughs> Of course, if I start playing around with the swell boxes, I get that beautiful crescendo effect. It's probably far too loud, actually, to accompany any kind of congregation, but that's how I'd be working. Remember when we were in Bonn, I was sort of waving a key around. 
actually I was waving it around and I said, look everybody, Big Ben. And then a few people got on their high horse and said, no, that's not Big Ben. Big Ben's the bell inside that tower. Yeah, well, come on, it's for an international audience. Let's not be pedantic about it. Anyway, uh, this organ is no different. There's a key you can turn and it starts up a second motor, actually a third motor. We've got an engine for the English organ. We have a moteur for the French organ and we have a secret key for the tuba from this organ. And the stops are way up here, way out of reach. That's perfect for small organists. They can't get their hands on it. And this tuba is apparently something rather special. If you look at the website for the, um, for the, for the organ here in Gattenbach, it describes the tuba as being one of the finest in the world, which I thought was a pretty bold claim to make. Then I arrived in the church and played it. Let's see what you think. <laughs> Check this out. This is where they put the pipes for the tuba. Uh, it's a rather compact solution up there, I think, but it's very, very clever. What happens, what, what that sort of led to, that the, the tuba doesn't speak in one direction into the church. That would be very direct and very bombastic, probably far too much for a church of this size. But because they've hidden it against the wall behind the organ, it's sort of, it's a very diffused sound. That sounds negative, but it isn't. It's a very diffused sound throughout the entire church. It sort of it spreads itself rather beautifully through the whole church. It's a rather clever way of doing things, and I like it a lot. Before this video gets completely over, uh, sort of overly long, it's probably already very, very long, but I, I haven't shown the pedal stop separately. There is a 32-foot reed here, a contra trumpet, which is rather amazing. You're going to hear it in a minute. But what I've decided to do, I'm going to sort of make up a little piece of music, and I've got a dialogue going between the organ upstairs, the organ downstairs, put them together, build up a bit of full organ, and um, actually when I say full organ, it's not quite. I've left the tuba out a full organ because that's actually that's that really is an incredible effect and it should be should be saved for live actually the microphones we have here can't really pick it up properly um, so I think we'll leave it at that but uh, this is my idea of what this organ can do hope you like it <laughs> But once you finish making all this beautiful music and playing around, you get to close the organ up. And uh, well, we have to switch everything off. But I'm going to show you this first while it's still lit. Um, you get to close these wonderful doors. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. 
This reminds me of my old organ in Edinburgh. We had glass doors like this, sliding doors, and it gets even better. This one sticks. Ah, and once you've got it out, you lock everything up, and you can still see the console inside behind the glass. I think that's absolutely beautiful. I wish more organs had that. Lovely. So we've switched everything off. We've locked the organ up. Everything's gone to bed. The church is once again quiet. Uh, we've got to tidy up all our stuff, pack away, and then we can let poor old Ralph get home for the night. Um, we've been here for rather a long time filming this. We've had a great amount of fun together. Uh, so thank you greatly to Ralph for letting us have the time at the organ here. I'm uh, thrilled that I've finally made it here to Gattenbach, even though I used to live like just sort of 20 kilometers away. I'm a bit further away now, but um, it's uh, wonderful that I made it here, and I hope I get to come back soon again, or I hope I get to come back more often. And um, I think we're going to close up today with a little bit of our sort of Brexit theme, because it's still, we started it last week and it's still running, unfortunately. Uh, thanks, by the way, to Mr. Speaker John Berko, who uh, is hopefully going to sort things out with everybody. If he doesn't manage it, then Your Majesty, can you please step in and do something about it? Anyway, this organ is a perfect example of what Europe has been like. Ralph spends a lot of his time going over to England to visit English organs, to visit the cathedrals, to visit the organists, to get some ideas, to maybe get some new stops, some new things. Take them back here, put them in the organ, expand, 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 yeah? Now look what we've got here. We're in a German church and we have an English organ and a French organ. It's, it's Europe, isn't it? It's a European instrument. Now imagine a sort of a Brexit maniac came over here and wanted to play a concert. Well, he can switch the French organ off and only have the English organ if he wants to do that. Or maybe a pro-European, anti-Brexit person is gonna come over here and only play the French organ and leave the English organ out. Well, you can do that too. Or you can do what's probably most sensible. You can combine the two of them and have a hell of a lot of fun. So end of political rant. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry for, it be, for being so long, but it's such a wonderful instrument. I never ever thought it was really this good. I'd heard about it before and I, people had, everybody had said to me, this really is a brilliant instrument. And I thought, well, I'll have to see it for myself sometime. And I'm glad we came out today. It's gonna be, like I said, it's gonna be a very long video. I hope you've stayed with us right to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. And that actually concludes our series of organs here in the Westerwald. Um, I, 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 this can't be top now, okay? This is, that's it. That can't be top for me in this area anyway. So anything we visit from now on has to be w much further away from here. Um, I'm really excited. I think you can tell. Anyway, let's leave it there. Get tidied up. Time for tea. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.